to this episode of Rushed Vibes. I am your host, Jessica Rushed Vibes Rushing, accompanied by David Rushed Vibes Rushing. And we are here to vibe. What's up? I'm not doing this. How's it going? I'm not, I'm not doing this. I promised one or two of the girls that I would, I would wear these glasses on camera. So if you're wondering why I'm styling, that's why. And it's red to match the, uh, the holiday that just passed. So happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Happy belated Valentine's Day. If you uh, spent it alone, I'm either happy for you or I'm sorry because, you know, people feel differently about spending Valentine's Day solo. So. I'm, Something wrong? I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to look at you while you have those glasses on. What do you mean? And have them lit. It's, oh, okay. Is it blinking too fast for you? Is it slower? Happy Valentine's Day, everybody. I hope you all experience love in some form. How was your Valentine's Day? It was all right. Yeah? Did anybody, anybody buy you flowers? I got flowers the day before Valentine's Day. Oh, so somebody went above and beyond. Yeah, I didn't get flowers the day of Valentine's Day. Oh. But you still had flowers from the day before. I actually didn't get even the kids. Even the one who is usually very emotionally intelligent. She didn't get me a mommy Valentine. So you're only emotionally intelligent if you buy your mother flowers on Valentine's Day? No, I'm just saying it's it was a it was a different kind of Valentine's Day. Hmm. You even like school will usually make like have the kids make like a valentine for their parents that's new school yeah none of, none of that you feel some kind of way you need to talk about it i do feel a little a little bit of a way i didn't how do you so you can, you're you're still on camera <laughs> just go just 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 go to your room bye good night Make sure you edit. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm not gonna put her little her little hind parts on <laughs> YouTube. Well, let's talk let's talk it out. I mean, no, I mean that it was it was a good it was a regular it was a Valentine's Day of I've had ten Valentine's Days before kind mm -hmm. of Valentine's Day. Uh not that that's a bad thing. It's just that's the type of Valentine's Day it was. Yeah. But I think I would have expected one of my kids to have made some kind of happy Valentine's Day mommy. It's all about them. Or maybe make me a Valentine's Day breakfast. Or something. I do think they, they volunteered to share their candy with me. So I just turned it down. I you know, speaking of Valentine's Day, um, two things. One serious, one not so. So, this is part of Rush Fives. We're very transparent. So, you and I just had a very deep, <clears throat> tough, probably unfinished conversation. Mm. Uh, where you expressed some things to me, things that I did, and things that I didn't do. And while uh, I may feel like I have justified reasons for how I was um, at the end of the day I still I still hurt you you were hurt mm -hmm. and you know how quickly I try to process things so um, I did say it before I don't know if you felt like I was being genuine or not but I just want to say that I, I sincerely apologize and I hope that you can find it 
to forgive me. I can't. Cool. So the second <laughs> thing that I was going to talk about was, um, there is no dirtier look as a man you will receive than the look of other women when you're in the store <laughs> the day before Valentine's Day buying flowers. Why are they giving a dirty look? I, don't know, I guess they're like last minute. But it's like I mean, flowers die. They do. So you gotta so you can't really buy them too early. I feel like You I can't buy you can't buy them. I appreciate the flowers I was given, but I do feel yeah, like they're nice. They're a cliche they gift. Are. That's why I feel like it's better to just be single. You don't have to worry about none of these capitalized ca- this capitalism fun. Or you could just focused. get a quality Valentine's gift that doesn't require a last minute bouquet of flowers. Well, again, flowers expire quickly. Okay, you bought those two days ago. They look just fine. Yeah, no, imagine if I bought, bought them like a week, a week before, and, not, and just giving them to you like yesterday. They'd be shriveled. And you don't like shriveled. So, yeah, so I went in there. But flip side, you'll find no greater solidarity than when you're in the store with other men buying flowers the day before Valentine's Day. Passing me dues, I was late. Y'all should be proud of yourselves. I could have gotten you nothing and been like, next year I got you, boo. Nah, I got you. Thanks. No problem. Appreciate you. But now see if you if you, you so disrespected, I bet not see you eating that candy neither. Even though it's already open. Mm-hmm. It's really because your kids been trying to get into it. I'm sure they have. Uh our oldest doesn't have school tomorrow, so she just, just pulls it up on the couch like she's on YouTube. <laughs> Yo, go to bed. It's tragic. Uh, what else is going on? Uh, there have been a lot of gnats. Since it's the, warming up, baby. Since it's about to be spring, it's about to be gnat season. Um, gnats, moths, flies. Super Bowl was Sunday. It was. How how are we feeling about the Kansas City Swifts win? <laughs> I mean, I really had no Swifts in the game. You had two Swifts here with two Swifties here with you. Two Swifties, but I had no Swifts in the game. Uh, I'm really not a Swiftie. I'm a, I'm a Kelsey. E. <laughs> You're a Kelsey fan? Not really, but I feel like people were attacking him for attacking dating. his coach. No, attacking him. Oh, oh, yeah, I guess he did kind of bump him. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, like, I don't know if I'm a fan of him anymore. It was a little slight bump. It was a little love tap. He was like screaming in his face, and I, I missed it, the play before, so I don't know what happened that he had, that warranted that response. I guess he wasn't, I guess he wasn't getting the, most times when you see a receiver upset at their coaches because they're not getting the ball. So, so I think, I think that's, that's something to do. Maybe he wasn't as involved as he felt he should have been. Okay. Um, but it's kind of, <coughs> uh, poetic because the biggest catch of the game was the catch that set up the uh, the field goal for overtime to force overtime. And Kelsey wasn't involved in that. No, he was. He oh. caught he caught the ball and ran for the for the first down. Oh, I don't remember. The game was a blur. Yeah, he was, he was, he was the, there for commercials and Usher. Yeah, he was in the phone. Um. Yeah, after after Usher put his shirt back on and got off stage, yeah, he was disinterested all of a sudden. No, I was still watching the commercials. Commercials were great because the commercial right after they Usher were, was the commercial that was filmed in Ghana, and that was a very big deal to that me. That was nice. Um, no, I mean that was beautiful. Shout out to Ghana. Yeah, and the NFL. Mm. Shout out to Ghana. Well, I mean, they have the camp in Ghana, which is why they filmed the commercial there. Mm. And how long Ghana been around? S- as an independent state no, or in general. Yeah, an independent state. Since 1957. Mm. And when they decided to put that, that that facility there? When was the first Super Bowl? Like, one guy was out there if he was at, like... I'm just saying. This was his 58th just, Super Bowl. Yeah, you can give him too much credit. They, America just started liking black people. You Ex- think they're take exactly. Them? And we over here giving them a shout-out to the NFL. Nah, we're going to keep them at arm's length. Keep them at arm's length. 
the Cincinnati Bears player Jeremiah Owusu, who is a Ghanaian, he was behind. He was a, a big contributor to the commercial, so uh, a lot of credit goes to him uh, for that. So I I will acknowledge uh, the. And there was another. There was actually a Chiefs player who is also a Ghanaian. I don't remember his name, but I did share it on Facebook because he held up the Ghana flag um, during their their victory on the field. So I do not love that a lot of Ghanaian athletes usually fall into football and like can can we get some Ghanaian basketball players mm. I would really enjoy that I don't know that there's even a one there might be one that's half but most of them are in football which hmm. I mean might say something about the stature of of our build that we're better built for football than we are for basketball um, a lot of us aren't tall but mm. Yeah. But my grandfathers were tall. Um, Allegedly. Both exceeded six feet. I wasn't really tall. Taller than you? I mean, yes, but... You know, I said uh, exceeded. I didn't say were six feet. Mm, like, both exceeded. Yeah, okay, so they could be like six one. Still taller than you. That's, and that, exceeding six feet. I'm not debating that. Um, I'm, I've, I've made peace with my lack of height, but I'm just saying it's not like... You know, it was like six five. Were they six five? I don't know. I never met any of them. Yeah. So how do we know that they actually were tall? But I know they were. They're tall. How? They've always been described as tall by short people. No. <laughs> so like, if you five five, somebody's five eleven. No, oh my god, they're tall. Five eight. Okay. And her. F she, 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 I'm, I'm actually just. I'm, I'm just she always described her father as tall. Like pictures of my grandfather. I'm just. My I'm just grandfather. Mm. You could see he was. He was tall and. Mm, I'm sure he was. I'm just. I'm just not watching. Shout out to the. But the height skipped. Height, height skipped me. Ancestors. Um, but I. I height, height. You're tall if you keep your hair in that bun like that. This is. It's artificial. Height, about five. So it doesn't count. About five eight with that. In. I'm fine with being five six. Right. Quarter. I don't need to be tall. Get you, so get you some platforms. Um, so there was Super Bowl. What else happened? Uh, we did our annual family uh, confetti wall photos on Saturday. Free photos, baby. So every year, and by every year, I mean this last is, second year. This is second year. <laughs> we uh, every year since last year, as a family, in uncoordinated outfits, we run to South End. We were slightly coordinated last year. We all had some semblance of red on. We were, um, but it was cold, so you couldn't even see everybody's red because we had coats on. Yeah, well, shout out to the uh, the groundhog because I'm I'm digging this slightly warmer weather we're getting. Okay, I'll give the groundhog more. About, by by I say what by your birthday it's gonna be like 65, 68 consistently. Anyway, <laughs> so we went to South End. We went to the confetti heart wall. We took our family pictures. Of course, Sonoma didn't smile. She had her pacifier in her mouth. David has sunglasses on, so there's always going to be something that's like imperfect. Wait, what's wrong with me having sunglasses on? Because no one else in the picture has sunglasses on. Because nobody else had them. No one. You're not supposed to take a family picture with sunglasses. Why didn't you tell me to take them off? Why didn't you think to take them off? Because I didn't want to lose them. <laughs> I'm always misplacing it. I got one pair left. So anyway, so our, uh, our our personal trainer and friend Rocky, he saw them and he said that Sonoma is Maggie from The Simpsons because she always has. Passed you know, so he was talking. He was talking about our daughter. <laughs> and yeah. I was like, you know what? Now that you've said that, it's it's right. It's like, funny because he's my trainer too, and he didn't tell me that joke. I drop a twenty five pound weight on his foot next time I see him. Absolutely not. Um, no, I won't. Because uh, Rocky would burst. He would like. He'd crush you. Yeah, you just break them. Yeah. Break. So we took our pictures. The the edit came back really, really, really quickly. Uh, Colin's camera. That's the photographer who does them. Uh, he he had them up by like next day. I think uh, I was able to download them. Uh, so we did that and did a little Super Bowl cooking. Me, I did the Super Bowl cooking. Uh, to where nobody thought I was doing anything. <laughs> And now it's Thursday. Thursday night, to be Thursday exact. Night. Night. Hopefully everybody sees us tomorrow. And lucky for Sala, she does not have school tomorrow or Monday. So I'm envious of her. My boss is out. So tomorrow might be light. So is mine. 
<laughs> we got to start acting like our bosses and actually use pay time. Although I'm taking time off next week. I mean, I use PTO. I'm following the week. I'm, I'm trying to be better because I, at the end of the year, I still had a hundred and like 20 hours of PTO that were unused. You can cash yours out though. No, I can't. Can you roll it over? Nope. They canceled that last year was the last year or the first year I was there. 2022 was the last year you could do that. After that, they, it was use it or lose it. So I, I made a pact with myself that I'm going to use, use my PTO. Yeah. I mean, if they're not going to, they're not going to let you cash it out or not roll over. I mean, that's, that's wild. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I mean, could you imagine rolling over a hundred 20 hours? Yeah, actually I could. That'd be, that's like a month over. That's over a month. That's two or three months. Mm, what's the problem? I'm talking about a company corporate corporately. Yeah. I'm sure there's a cap. They'd probably like roll over 50%. But anyway, um, yeah, I, the week is kind of run by. I've jumped into a meeting. I think it was Tuesday and I was like, well, I hope you all have a great week and it's, or I've had a great week and it's only Tuesday. And in my mind, I just couldn't process that it's only Tuesday. And it had felt like several days had already passed. It was, it was a, a heavier week um, mm -hmm. than I expected. And then yesterday was Ash Wednesday. So we're now in like the Lent season before we hit Easter. Uh, we're getting new music from Beyonce. That's great. Country music. I'm, I don't. I don't really care. That's great for her. I'm not. I'm not a Beyonce or. I think she's a beautifully talented woman, but I'm not like in the beeh beehive, beehive. However, you're supposed to say it. Um, I do hope that in her crossing over to country music. She also does some collaboration with some existing black country music artists to kind of shine a light that, you know, there are already people who look like us in this genre. Mm. Um, like there's Mickey Guyton. There's, ugh, there are a few other people. I can't remember their names um, that are already in the country music sector that I think need to be highlighted and get some attention to. So I would love for her to use her platform to do that. <coughs> um but no that's great country music somebody in one of our meetings said that they heard a joke that she is trying to get album of the year and since she hasn't been able to she's going country so she can get like country music album of the year mm. which she very much so might get uh, i'm gonna i'm very curious how beyonce and country is going to play because i know that the country music genre can be very hostile to black musicians even though foundationally country is rooted in the black community mm. along with bluegrass and one could probably argue every um musical genre so i'm i'm curious if she'll get if if the CMAs or the Country Music Association will give her um, the acknowledgments. I know that there was a radio station that was getting so many requests for her songs that they had to start playing it, which yeah. makes me wonder why they had to, why they waited for request before they started playing it. Cause it's a new country song and it's Beyonce. Like you would think by default. So I, I again, I'm curious of how that's going to play out because I, I, I just know the hostility that comes with, with the country music genre, which is unfortunate. So we'll see. Uh, I haven't listened to any of the songs. Um, but we'll see. I don't either. Apparently they played one or two in the commercials and I just missed it. I, I, I'm usually very good with attention to detail um, and certain things and it just went right over my head. I was very oblivious um, to mm. a lot that was going on. So, um, it is what it is. Uh, good luck to her. Hopefully she gets album of the year. So we get a, get a Beyonce album and a Taylor album mm -hmm. the same year. Within a month of each other. Cause, uh, I think Beyonce is March 29th. And if I'm not mistaken, 
Lincoln, Solace would know, uh, Taylor is April 19th. So yeah, they're within 30 days of each other. Um, so we'll see how that, um, that executes, but more power to them. Yeah. Um, touring at the same time and then have albums dropping within a month of each other. It almost seems like they're competing, but they're not. They're not. But, but like, Taylor came up as a country singer, right? Didn't she do she country did. and then transitioned to pop? And they kicked her out. Beyonce had been doing pop. R&B. R&B pop. Pop and Rop. B. Pop Rop. and B. Pop and B. And now trying to take country. She was like, oh, I'm trying to get me that. She's trying to get that I'm, Grammy. I'm that gonna, album of the year. For that. So she's like, all right, yeah, if I, I got to hop into y'all's genre to get my album of the year, I'll do it. I wonder if it'll still give you the same gratification. Like there are albums that again, I don't know. I never dive deep into Beyonce's albums, but apparently there are albums that she's made that qualified for album of the year. So I wonder if like, man, I had to go all the way to country music before, but also I don't know that country music should be in all the way field. Um, again, there are a lot of black artists in the country music genre, uh, male and female groups, um, husband and wives that, um, I do hope that this, this does expose them, uh, and gets them the attention that they deserve because like, it's kind of like my post with, um, I got to screen the Bob Marley movie Monday and Bob Marley is my favorite musical artist ever. Um, but there are a lot of other root rock reggae artists that also deserve their attention. And I, I, don't, I don't want not to diminish the attention that should be given to Bob. He's gotten his flowers. He's been in every sandals commercial, like everything positive about Jamaica. You're going to hear, you know, one love in the background. Uh, but there are some amazing root rock reggae artists that I think need to get some attention as well. That still delivered a very strong message, even harsher, um, a little more radical than Bob's was. Um, I'd say Bob's was a little diluted for a more Western audience as opposed to your culture and, and George Clinton and, Black Uhuru, you've got some artists that were like, we gonna call white people Babylon, <laughs> down press a man. They, oh, it was, they, they go hard. Um, but those artists also should be acknowledged and the rest of the genre should be acknowledged is, is what I'm getting to. So I, I want, I should probably thread that, but I do want Beyonce to bring attention to the existing artists and do some collaborations there. Um, but everybody's going to be buying cowboy hats and doing line dances and all the things. So that should be fun. Um, watching how Beyonce is going to, from a marketing perspective, influence things. Cause you know, Taylor Swift has influenced a lot as well. Like she has essentially revolutionized football. Um, and the support, the fandom of football, or at least the fandom of the Kansas city chiefs. So, I, I'm, I'm very curious how, if, um, Beyonce can have the same effect on country music. Cause yes, Beyonce is very impactful. I don't know that the Beyonce effect is the same as the Taylor Swift effect. Mm -hmm. I think they both have effects, but I think Taylor Swift's effect is more of like, a category five hurricane and Beyonce is like a tropical storm. Mm. Um, and I know some people, I think Shannon, Shannon Sharp actually had talked about, I think he, had, there was a quote that he said, Shannon Sharp. he said, Shay -shay. Beyonce doesn't move the needle mm. the way Taylor Swift does. Mm. And people were offended by it. But Shannon Sharp said that. I don't think he's wrong. I don't. And 
So I just want to let all the the, the, ba- the they're ba- gonna come for me. I just want to let everybody know that this is Jessica's opinion, my opinionated truth, not mine. I, ha- I I may have an opinion on this matter, but, but, too st- but it is not. <laughs> it's not. It is not that of my wife. I think if you, but you have to look. Beyonce and Taylor Swift are in two two different genres, two different fields, two different stages of their life. You've got you know a single white female being compared to a married black mother. Yes, both are performing artists, but they and and both can appeal to their audiences in a great way. But I, the clutch hold that Taylor Swift has on her Swifties and how she can affect things is different. I think, and this is not me saying Beyonce does not have influence. Beyonce has an amazing influence. I don't, and maybe she doesn't use her influence as taylor does but one thing that taylor has to her advantage is everyone feels obligated to protect taylor and that's something a post that i saw that i it really made me think they said taylor really plays into the damsel white female who needs to be protected does she because i don't know that she really even acknowledges a lot of the stuff that's going on she doesn't which is part of the she she definitely plays the naive oh my gosh like whenever she wins an award she's always like oh, surprise and uh, it, yeah th- th- it's a very i don't watch awards yeah, so that's why i've I don't. been around those type of females enough that i can see it mm-hmm. this is not to say that she's not a nice person she's not a good person but she definitely can play it, it, it's it's an, it's a manipulation tactic and she can play stop looking at my shoes <laughs> i didn't realize that you got your slides on i mean i got my house slippers on so i can't really say anything but this not very it's not it's very unlike you to record with the house slides on and I'm just like, <laughs> why do you have the slides on? I mean, I I didn't put makeup on. I didn't change my outfit. I just I just sat here. Because you thought I was going to be like, we don't have to record, didn't you? You was over there in that couch. You in that corner, in the sunken. I figured once. I figured, using the, you was in the sunken corner. I figured we were going to record. But yeah. I was I was like, I just don't feel like. I, I wasn't in the mood to put in the extra effort. Mm-hmm. Sorry, community. See, all of y'all are worth it, Jessica. You were. You're worth it because I'm here because I could have just taken my butt to bed while he was putting the kids to bed and then that would have been it. And that's what I did yesterday. I was tired. That exactly. That is what you did yesterday, actually. Came out of the house. Was silent. Silent. Sil- silencio. TV was on. TV was watching the living room. Yeah. Nobody was watching the was TV. Supervising. Um, but yeah, so I can't remember. But you no, know, she definitely leans into the whole whole protect me um but it's smart it's 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 a it's a tactic it's a manipulation tactic and she does it well um again i work i'm in marketing so it's like you got to use what's given to you and she does and her team both of them both of their marketing teams they need to come up they need to come up with a course I don't know, or a certificate program that is, that revolves around understanding the brand management and marketing of these pop stars and why the female pop stars are able to do it better than the male pop stars, Mm -hmm. in my opinion, or musicians or rappers, whatever. I don't feel that males are able to draw the power that these two female musicians are able to pull. But I would, I know Taylor Swift has some, is it Temple University? One of the, a few of the universities do have some courses about like the Taylor effect. Um, But I think it needs to be a collaborative one between Taylor and Beyonce because Taylor's influencing football she's influencing politics fox news thinks she's some kind of probe that's been stuck into culture to it's kind of annoying how she's they're trying to kind of wedge her into the uh the election 
Yeah, it is. Um, and I don't know that <sighs> the government formed on separation of church and state. It's not separation of pop and state. If, if, if celebrities, ha- athletes, all of these other people who are well known, who have influence, have every right, right to influence an election because there's no factor that says they shouldn't. Well, it's really your boy who who weirded out because <laughs> saying why she shouldn't she shouldn't support Biden, she should support him. Well, so he really got the ball. He was the one who really got the ball. He, he definitely did. And one thing I was thinking about today. I I appreciate that you didn't refute the fact that he's your boy. You finally um, you finally I'm leaned into the fact that he's because it's it's easier to no, just, it's just, but it's easier just ignore you but, but, when you say no, stupid stuff. Okay, no, but okay, let's let's be let's be serious. Okay. That's your guy, right? Absolutely not. He's a northerner. He's a Yankee, just like you. No. <laughs> I mean that's your guy. No. Yeah. I'm sorry. I guess I'm confused. I thought it was I thought it was your guy. You're a northerner. Northern VA. No, no. Nova. It's below the Mason Dixon oh, line. Yeah, it's it's Mason always Dixon. it's always been below the Mason oh, Dixon line. Conveniently y'all aren't northerner. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, one thing that I realized is that in North Carolina longer than I've been in, he has yet to put, uh, at least I haven't seen a political commer- a campaign commercial by I mean, him. I don't think he has any. Else. That's my thing. Like this, the, there probably needs to be some coursework. It needs to be a trifecta course. It needs to be a course on Taylor Swift, Beyonce, and oh boy. It's really early to be. To really get the Nikki the hardcore commercials, yeah, because she's desperate. She is. She it's, is. It's, it's really early to be um <coughs> doing the hardcore <coughs> campaign ads. I think, but you know, you know the you know the ads. I am excited about taking a little little brief aside. The online sports betting ads. I saw you little. I saw you little thread talking about they're taking over your. I'm tired of them. I love them. Why? Because we about to get we about to, these parlays about to hit. That's why. It's obnoxious. No, it's also only obnoxious until one of these parlays hit. You gonna hit a parlay? You damn right I'm gonna hit a parlay. But who's money? The house money. Oh, there's no house money. There is house money. No, they are overwhelming the TV. And it's just, I'm, I'm watching. Make sure you don't forget that. The Chosen on Amazon Prime. And it's I'm a sign. FanDuel commercial. It's a sign. Jesus is letting you know. Go it's ahead and hit them. Specifically to North Carolina. Not Jesus. I'm tired of Kevin Hart. It's I'm one. T- it's a targeted ad. Number two, Jesus is letting you know. Go ahead and hit them parlays. That's not what Jesus is doing. That's exactly what Jesus is saying. That's why it's running during the chosen. That's, that's a lie. So, yeah, I, I'm not. It's a vehicle. I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan of seeing all these commercials about online gambling. Speaking of um, fans. This isn't this isn't funny. It's, just, it's not funny. This is, sure? this, is gonna laugh. this is a more serious part of the of the podcast. Um It's absolutely not. No, it is. It absolutely is. Uh Thursday. Yesterday. Today. Tuesday. What when was the shooting? Yesterday. It was a shooting yesterday. Yes, at the at the Chiefs. The Chiefs uh, Chiefs uh, Super Bowl celebration uh Parade. Parade. At a point when there were eight hundred, I think over eight hundred people there. I did not. Uh, multiple, uh, multiple people taken into custody. Twenty-two people hit, one dead. I saw <laughs> a clip of a man tackling. Yeah, there was the a shooter. Yeah. Good Which guy. Is what the second shooting this week? Because Lakewood Church had a shooting on Sunday. Lakewood Church had a shooting on Sunday. If you consider Sunday part of a new week, it's a little controversial. I consider it part of. I based off of how I keep my planner Sunday as part of the yeah. new week. I don't I think it's part of the old week, but it's, within it's, within seven days there have been two two shootings. Mm-hmm. Um I don't know what we're supposed to do with these. I, I don't like talking about because it's 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 to the point that we didn't want it. It's to the point that reasonable 
thinking people didn't want it to get to where it's just like, oh, it was a shooting. That's what after like Columbine and all that, that's where we didn't want things to get to. Mm-hmm. Which is why people were really pushing very hard to get something done. But nothing really got done. Mm-mm. So now we're where we didn't want to be. And it's just like, like, oh my God, it's terrible. This isn't, this isn't who, this is not this isn't who we are. This is absolutely who we are. We live in a terrorist it's, state it's, where you cannot gather without the possibility of there being a shooting. I can't think of, one, I'm naturally a homebody, I'm introverted, but. As a millennial, like through my lifetime, one of the reasons why I don't like going out and specifically (laughs) going out at night, one, because shit always happens at night. Bad shit always happens happens at night. In the day. Shit happens, does happen in the day, but sometimes, but bad shit always happens at night. Um, But I just... It's always a risk, whether it's high or low. It's always a risk going to like South End to take pictures with your family, Mm -hmm. going to a basketball game, going to a wrestling event, going to a retreat. Honestly, cutting someone off in traffic is a risk. Cutting somebody off in traffic, which is why I know you like a lot of times people cut us off and and I get like the little Vin Diesel in me and you'd be like, David, David, it's just. But I was telling I was telling Rocky, our trainer, uh, I think he was either this morning or, or Tuesday. I don't really rock with guns like that. Guns weren't allowed in our house. Couldn't play with the little guns that came with the GI Joe action figures. Couldn't play with water guns. Um, I. It still doesn't make sense to me that my dad literally enlisted in the military, but was like very hardline no guns but maybe because he was in a war is why he was like hardline no guns but I just because of how I was raised I'm just like I'm not I don't really feel like I guns are necessary um but at this point why not just know the NRA is not gonna have your back cause you're black yeah that's fine <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm black I'm used to people historically people haven't had the backs of black people throughout the history of this country. So I'm not really, that's not really breaking news to me. I'm not, okay, I'm just making sure I just want to not dis, I'm, I'm not dis, just, I'm not distraught at this. I don't want you going in. No, I'm just that. saying like one black, I feel like black people should arm themselves. Number one. Oh yeah. Like just, that's like just black people just as an entity separate from everything else. I feel like they should have, a gun but be properly trained mm-hmm. and hold a gun legally um broadening that to everybody i just feel like you know a lot of these states are making it really easy to have a gun without any sort of checks and balance um without any sort of required training i think that's dangerous mm-hmm. it is i think there should be required training i think you know, obviously this, I mean, this is nothing new. I feel like just like I got to get insurance for my car. I feel like you should have gun insurance. Like you should be required to have these things. But in the meantime, I mean, I feel like everybody I mean, it's to the point where if we can't, if we can't limit the opportunities that, that, that bad people have to get them. Then good people have to have them too. Then, then, then uh, we, should, you know, the public should have them. Because if something like this pops off, until the police get there, even though it was a, it was a Super Bowl parade, so police were probably already on mm. on site. This is how I feel, man. I never, I never thought I would be here, but it's just like you might as well, because nothing else, like the, there's no alternative. Yeah. I mean, now that we've moved, I'm more open to the idea of owning one. 
I think because granted we're on a main road, we are isolated. And I think the fact that we have like property, it, y'all, it, it, I might be a first generation American, but it doesn't take much for me to go back to like the 1930s being a black person. Like I go down 85 South and once we pass Greenville and you would think that I went back in time. So now that we have like land, I just get like real paranoid. Like someone going to throw a, a burning cross in our, our yard. Okay. Calm down. Is someone going to just pull up on our property and the nearest house? Like, you're not going to hear our screams. So like, maybe we need a gun. Um, Again, but you know, black folks had guns back then too. They did. I don't know what they were doing or not doing. I'm not here to speculate again, first generation, but, um, I get it. You got it. You got to protect yourself. But in the, the incident at Lakewood, it just so happened that there were some off duty officers and I guess off duty officers have their guns on them. So they were able to, um, take down the shooter but um I, I don't i don't know i don't like i'm still torn uh, maybe enough hasn't happened to me that when i'm going out my thought is oh there could be a shooting here oh it could be dangerous here um i'm still very much so like god is my protector you know, let my going out and coming in, you know, be protected and blessed. But that's me. But that's probably also millions of other people around the world, like the country who are saying similar prayers going out and then finding themselves in a grocery store where somebody decides to shoot up at a school that somebody decides to shoot up at a parade that somebody decides to shoot up at countless other innocent places that human beings need to go to on a regular basis that someone decides to shoot up. So I don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I am tired of talking about shootings. I also think that I have started to become callous to them. And I think a lot of Americans are, and it's not a matter of, we don't care. I am, I, I sympathize, excuse me, um, at any, for anyone who has lost or been injured or is related to someone who's been injured by a shooter or a gunman, excuse me, in a common place because the PTSD, the, the trauma, the fear, the loss of innocence, that's, that's not fair. Um, yeah. Cause I think they said over half of the victims, of the, the people who were shot were kids over half or something like that. Like and that's just and, evil. That's really what it is. It's just evil. Yeah. People are evil, but um, like, that's why I'll, I heard, I can't remember what context I heard the analogy, but they will try to, and by they, I mean the news, the media will, you know, they'll talk about suicide bombers in the Middle East and make them seem like they are uncivilized, savage people. But you have people in this country who see fit to, the Super Bowl was Sunday. Somebody took all day Monday to say, I'm going to go to the parade and terrorize people. That's savage. That's inhumane. That's uncivilized. I think, the, I think it's, to be fair, it, I mean, it's still, the investigation is still ongoing. And I think the last report I saw said it started because of a, some sort of dispute. So I don't know that it was necessarily planned. I but what are you disputing that you need to pull your gun out? And why you got to, I mean, I guess because you're me, maybe you're allowed to. But what, but what could you, if you are at the Kansas City Chiefs parade for you know, the victory are, of the Super it's, Bowl, you know, middle of the day. Happy. Like, I don't think a San Francisco fan showed up. Middle of the game, middle of the day, people drinking, like. 
I just feel like in that environment, there's really nothing to dispute. I mean, yeah, a, a, a logically thinking person would, would agree with you, but. But you got illogical people with guns. And probably potentially under the influence of something. But I, I mean. It's all speculations. I, I, as a parent, as a human being, you know, I'm an active person. I go places. I do things. I travel. Um, like even recently, like I'm getting ready to go on a girl's trip. I found out I was watching the news. These two moms went on a girl's trip on a cruise um, to the Bahamas, which is now like the Bahamas and Jamaica are like the top, like don't go countries now. But um, on one of the days at days at shore, I think that's what they call it. Uh, they went to a resort to hang out. Someone's offered to sell them like buy one, get one cocktails. They were roofied. They were assault. They were raped. Mm -hmm. And it's like, these were two women on a cruise. Just like first trip, no kids, no husbands. We're just going to enjoy ourselves. Like I, it, the world can be an ugly place in terms of the things people choose to do. Uh, and it's sad, but I, 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 I just hope that everyone who is able to have a full recovery does have a full recovery. Um, and I just, I just want people to stop doing this and I want us to actually have a way to stop them from doing this because you should not have to fear going to a crowded event. You should not have to fear going to the grocery store. You should not have to fear sending your children to school. You, you should be able to live life innocently. And that's something that Americans don't have. And there are some countries that are in some deep poverty, but they at least have that. And there are countries who are not in poverty. I'm not saying that. I'm, you know, I'm just saying they're not first world fancy, think they're better than everybody countries. So that's, I think that's part of my opinion or part of the opinion I feel like sharing on the matter. I just don't, I don't, I'm in a place where I can live in the ignorance where I don't need to speak on a, a shooting because it hasn't directly affected me and I just I pray it stays that way yeah um you know condolences to to the uh the family of, of the woman who <clears throat> was killed and um positive energy to uh to everyone just everyone who was there but just think about all the kids who were shot or injured the kind of trauma that they're gonna have to deal with but then just people who weren't there just just the chaos of, of the moment mm -hmm. scrambling running people probably getting run over knocked over losing you know losing reach of of loved ones who were there like and it's straight pandemonium when, when when those things happen. So um, I hope everybody can um, get through it. You know this initial you know trauma and, and grief, and um, you know get a, get the help and, and care they need, so that you know they don't have to live with this fear when they when they go out in the future. It's just it's just great. Like. <laughs> like people call America the gun country and it's just like we're a lot of things but we are definitely the the gun the country, gun country yeah. and it's just wild um, but speaking of wild um, I guess I, I, I kind of want to change the tune to a more lighter mm -hmm. topic I had absolutely no idea one 
that your girl not my girl was teaching not my girl nor did I know that she was living a double life as an only fans person <laughs> Content creator, influencer. Do we call it OnlyFans people influencers? Fans. Because you was influencing a lot of people. The blurred out pictures that I saw, which I don't know why they put those on the news. Because it's information people need to know. So she's like adopted a Nigerian name. So we context, need to say who we're speaking for context, about. For context. We're speaking about Rachel Dole is all. Uh, if you hadn't heard. Rachel Dolezal is a is allegedly a Caucasian woman who has famously such, posed as she was the president of the NAACP chapter of, chapter. of Seattle, don't, don't Oregon, me. the Pacific Northwest, somewhere up there. Um, she has such an appreciation for black culture that she chose to appropriate black culture and take on the personification she had a documentary of a we, black woman we watched, we watched it, it. Netflix. it was in she is firm they i mean they talked to her family her mama was like she white she's <laughs> white her daddy's white. Yeah, I guess you're white. Her, like we are white people. Rachel has uh, permed her hair so that it's curly. Like she, she loves black culture is what I would say. She, but there's like a fine line between loving, uh, appreciating a culture. Sure. And then transitioning to appropriating a culture. And even I try to be like sensitive of that. Like I have a great appreciation for Latin American culture. Joy as ain't Latin. I'm mm, ancestry would beg to differ. But I was raised Latin. Uh but I always Excuse wonder me. if like if someone's name like I remember we, there was a there's a guy at work. He works in tech. His name is spelled J O R G E. Jorge. Jorge. Everybody calls him George. But it's so Jorge. In a meeting, the first meeting, I've never met him. I don't know. I see his name. It says Jorge. So, hi, Jorge. And everybody else. Hey, hi, George, George. So, I'm like, am I appropriating by assuming his name is Jorge? No, his name is George. It's Jorge. Jorge. Yeah. So, I always wonder, like, is it a what's what's appropriating with that? Like, if I say. Pronouncing his name. You say Cuba. We say Cuba. No. Instead of Cuba. No. No. See, this is what you do. You sit here. No, no, I'm no, just no, 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 no. You sit here and you try. I get it. You try your best. You're still not there yet. If you're going to say it, get it right. I'm not. I'm not. You it's, don't have to do it, no, no, no. It's cool. What? <laughs> it's, <laughs> what did you. It's cool. You didn't. You said no letters. Cool. Anyway, it's not Cuba. You say like cool. when you say things the correct way. It's not appropriate. You're saying it. Probably, I feel like someone who's from there or who is would, would appreciate it. The fact that you say it. Hmm. It's not like you coming in saying call me Jessica. It's hey. actually Jessica. <laughs> okay, whatever. I have been calm down. I been I have been calm. Jessica my whole life. Calm down. I have been everybody, all of my friends' mother. You say my name is. You say. My my name is Jess or Jessica. No, I'm Jessica. Jessica Rushing. That's been me. Okay. Next next up. Anyway. Next up. So Rachel relocated from the Pacific Northwest. And then she changed her name. She changed her name to Nikichi. She went to Amare Diallo. She yeah. She went to Arizona. Oh. Nikichi is shortened equal name of. I said Nigerian. She took on a Nigerian. Gift of God. Yeah, Nigerian names are leg Well, I tell you, Nigerian names are the most sentence no. names. Let's unpack that. Because, I mean, I guess we're all technically gifts of God. It's God. If, you, if, the, if that's, you know, what you subscribe to. I don't. You don't subscribe to that we're all gifts of God? No, I don't subscribe to like the 
the titling. Mm. You know, how, like people be like, mm, my king, queen, hey, queen, blah, blah. I've, I've never been like a fan of that. No, that's not, I'm not, I'm not I feel like this is the equivalent of like, I'm, I'm going to take on a name that means gift of God. I mean, should we talk about the name you have for me on your phone? Hefe? Stop it. What? Hefe is Hefe. That's how Ghost said it in power. Ghost was black. Yeah. So is you. <laughs> <laughs> Newsflash. <coughs> you black and he is. Hefe. Literally and figuratively. Hefe. There's an accent. Um. Yo, you know. The old, but just, we talk a lot about the, what's been going around. You know how like RSV is going around. Mm-hmm. What COVID. God's going around. COVID's going around. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of audacity going around. Audacity. The audacity to have done what she did. And to change her name. To an Ebo name. That means the gift. Bruh. Insufferable. Anyway, let's let's add more context to this. So allegedly she's changed her name. She's teaching an after school program, something like that. Mm-hmm. In Arizona, a suburb in Arizona. It's Tucson, I think. And she also Catalina, Catalina she simultaneously District. had an OnlyFans. And that OnlyFans she was providing content for only her fans. And it leaked. It leaked. So um, it's I'm sorry, but it's so crazy because when when the news dropped, it says Arizona teacher fired for having OnlyFans. Mm-hmm. And it had her picture. I'm like, yo, that's pretty sure. I thought it was another case of them using the wrong picture of someone no, for the cover. I'm like, it's Rachel Dolezal. Like, surely she's not teaching. And I'll be damned. What's wrong with her teaching? Um, I didn't think that anyone would welcome her into their school. It's just, it's like a PR problem. Is it? Yes. In a suburb of Tucson? I mean, they, people in Tucson got Netflix. Clearly they don't. Because she's over there perpetrating as an evil woman. And now look at her. And now look look at her. <laughs> They've been looking at her, which is why we're now it's look at her. I don't even have an issue with the fact that she has an OnlyFans. I, I think my biggest issue is with the person who exposed her only fans because it's not like someone's job is to be an only fans investigator like oh what do you do for a living i'm a, like an only fans investigative reporter no like you are utilizing only fans and you paid to see her only fans and now you're sharing that with everyone yeah i don't even know i don't even know how only fans works because you gotta have like you said, you gotta have a subscription. It's not like you, you can just assume you have because I mean of the few like. But I, I thought you couldn't block because we had another, we there was another teacher got fired and said she blocked like her whole state from being able to see her account. I don't I don't know that that I got one friend from high school who has an OnlyFans, but I never looked into it. Oh, is it the stripper? Yeah. How she know? I don't know. You don't keep up. Um, we keep her car for my 40th birthday, 40th birthday party. Ray, he's usually the one who like. I mean, I I can't talk to Ray. I until I watch the a hundred memes or, or reels he sent me. I since. Used to, like a lot of time on Saturday to go through. I keep mean. I'm well. In, I have well intentioned. I'm well intentioned, but I just always forget, and it's just like so many. That's why I've got like seven notifications just today, and I'm like, sir, why do you still? Keep- <laughs> and he, he and he like he'll like dedicate. He's a good friend because and he'll like send him with comments like. Yeah, like we're in a regular conversation, mm-hmm. and I like have not looked at one of these. I, I usually, months, I usually just feel the weekend I will allot some time. I'll put myself in the mental headspace for whatever mm-hmm. he sent over. I feel bad. But he he keeps me up to date on her. Um, but oh, do you want me to tell him to keep you up to date too? He keeps you up to date on who? The stripper. Oh, yeah. so we went to high you said together. you said her. I thought you meant like her. Her. Her from the Super Bowl? Yeah. No, her. The artist. But yes, the one that was at the Super Bowl. She got no OnlyFans? No, I'm just. You said he keeps you updated on her. I thought you were talking about her. No. Um, but anyway. You heard they say she wasn't really playing the guitar? She looked like a boss, so it doesn't really matter to me. Well, I mean, a lot of performers aren't singing. They're lip singing. 
What's that got to do with the guitar? So if you're... L- does she know how to play the guitar? It's guitaring, like, it doesn't make a difference to me. So you, you cool with her being out there like the, the sign language, <laughs> sign language witch lady <laughs> who was just making up signs? I don't, I don't trust any sign language interpreter because I'm just like... That's what I'm saying, like... I don't care. I'm here for the performance. Is the performance good? Like, some Millie and Vanilli need to make a comeback. There's actually a documentary I've been meaning to watch about them. Because they, like, one of them is dead. I don't know if it's Millie or Vanilli. Uh, but he's probably rolling in his grave because of the fact that lip singing is not a big deal anymore. But, um, yeah, I don't care that she has an OnlyFans. I don't care if a teacher has OnlyFans. Teachers are paid scraps. Um, so if they have to make supplemental incomes, let them make supplemental incomes. I'm not, I'm not here to regulate that. I mean, I, I, I wish OnlyFans wasn't the means for which they needed to, like, I wish they could just get on Etsy and sell honey. But if they got the feet, the legs, the hips, the whatever to share on OnlyFans, by all means, let them share and let them be able to pay their rent. Um, I don't know that I even care or have an issue with this. I'm glad she was able to relocate and for a time find some peace. I'm also like, sis, you couldn't have just laid low. Or just done the OnlyFans. Or just done the OnlyFans and done it in your actual name. I mean, and and it's not fair because I I firmly believe that someone should be allowed to be a teacher Mm -hmm. if that's what they want to do and they're good at and they're 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 educated and licensed to be um or certified i mean not licensed uh and should still be able to if they feel like they want to or need the the extra income to have an only fans yeah. i i i really think we need to have a reckoning with how we view sex work in this country I mean, and I think a lot, and I think a big part of it is your people. Biggest obstacle to that, and the biggest Christians? perpetrator of that Are you is, not a Christian? is your people. Are you not a believer? Your section of the Christians. Look, my the the man the the what the Jesus I follow. One of his homegirls was a former prostitute. So you mean his wife? <laughs> okay, Tom Hanks. Um, <laughs> That was Dan Brown, actually. So he got down. Tom Hanks didn't believe the his character didn't believe. He got down with he got down with them. I'm not with them. Wouldn't that be crazy if it was Jesus? If Mary Magdalene was Jesus' wife? Yeah, that would be so messy. Would it? Would it though? <laughs> the fact that the church covered it up, it'd be messy. Like Shorty been right there at the Last Supper like all these years, <laughs> and they covered it up like, nah, that's John the Baptist, or that's whoever. Anyway, no, no. Let's let's talk about this. Um, like, can you prostitution? Ima- can you imagine sex work has like, been? I'm not doing this. Why not? You, has been a prof. It's the one. It's the oldest profession. Like it's literally. It's probably the epitome of. Why don't you want to talk about Jesus being married? You have a natural. Like your body is a business. You turned your body into a business. I'm not saying I condone it, but it's the original form of entrepreneurship. You have a resource. Your organs and you're using them and you're profiting off of them so again i don't care that she was she was using only fans i also don't care that she was teaching i'm more i really want to know who was the one who exposed it because again you probably a parent he's he probably the the pto president so again why is the pto president on only fans um this is not me judging you being on OnlyFans, but They're probably just in the if you need to respect the only, if you're, if like the thing is, if we're all going to do it, then we all need to respect the code and the code should be, if you are looking at my OnlyFans, you cannot share my OnlyFans. Cause I, that just shares that you are also on OnlyFans. Yeah. I, I and mean, we've seen like, I'm just saying we, we should have a real, nope. <laughs> We have a real come to Jesus moment <laughs> about how we talk about and view sex work in this country. And, and honestly, I, I owe you a lot of props for getting me, I feel, to the right side of this issue because mm-hmm. I used to be like porn and you're like sex work. 
<laughs> he would correct me. Um, and I realized porn just has such a negative connotation with it, but it's just sex work, and, and this is it's it's a job. And so many people. I mean, there are regular jobs that are bad. Like there are people who go. There are people who who go to like work in these plants and expose themselves to all these fumes and chemicals and stuff. And you talk about damp. You talk about scarring your body or using your body for. You've seen the commercials if you were one of your loved ones. Yo, I never heard so nobody said about. Stop hating. Stop hating on sex work. Yeah. Um. Um. But because we're at an hour and seven minutes. And I want to put this out tomorrow, so I'm going to have to edit too much. Um, real quick, you want to talk about the potential of Jesus being married? You don't want to talk about that? Because you don't believe it, and you think it's stupid, or you just don't want to get down that rabbit hole? It doesn't... Change anything for you? No. Okay. But it would change something for the church. Do you understand that? I don't... It would be... I don't follow the doctrine of the traditional church. I'm not a, I'm not a traditionalist in that sense. I'm mm-hmm. a believer in Jesus Christ, but I'm not... I'm very sensitive about, like, being denominationed mm. or aligning myself with a specific... I feel like that would be even more reason to want to explore it, the possibility. I, if Jesus was married, great for him. Um, but a lot of what... Ing- a lot of what's in the Bible in terms of like what was allowed into the Bible. Okay. Um, Cause those are two different things. Yeah. But I'm, I'm not, I don't approach my faith with logic. You, you use logic for things. So there, there, there are two types of believers. There's, I think I'm going to use the word radical, but not radical as in terms of extremists, but radical in terms of faith that you don't, I don't need it to, I, I legit live by, I live by faith, not by sight. Mm. And there are some believers who it needs to make sense. The math needs to math mm. for them. I think out of the two of us, you are like the math needs to math. I need the logic to make sense. I'm going to analyze the details. I'm going to see the possibilities. I'm going to acknowledge what was left out, what could have been left out, what shouldn't have been left out, blah, blah, blah. I'm very much so my faith I don't need to see it for it to make sense but that's the the beauty of your faith God allows you he designed from my perspective from my belief he designed you a specific way he designed you intentionally to be the type who is logical who needs it to make sense who's going to question the types of questions you're going to ask God or have of God or have of Christianity are different from the types of questions. My questions are, is, am I, is my faith too big for what I'm fair and true. But the fact that even though there's a smidgen of a possibility that Jesus was married and Mary and his wife bore children. And the fact that all that was potentially covered up Mm -hmm. soon. The Da Vinci code is like, 40% 40% true. <laughs> I was saying, just knowing that there are gospels that didn't make it into the Bible, right? And knowing how the Bible was constructed, right? Um, the fact that if there's potential for that to have been real and that to have been like, nah, we need him to be like pure or whatever. So let's leave that out. Let's rewrite it. What else could or could not be true? That's that's how it's like a potential like domino effect for me. But that's when you you need to. No, no, no. My thing is, is that if that's a possibility, then that can kind of, that can kind of rupture the foundation of, of any faith because then it like, you start to get into like, it can, it can, it's like the little piece of, of string. Right mm-hmm. on a on a shirt, and well, and, 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 and the shirt just comes apart, right? Um, and I, I'm not someone who's sitting who's trying to like actively destroy Christianity. I don't know the Vatican might come for you. Uh, let them, let them come. You, I ain't worried. No, I'm not scared of the Vatican either. Um, I know, like recently, I I've you watched the Adventure Code? No, I. <laughs> 
you read they, angels and demons you know the i'm not a biblical scholar uh my memorization of the bible is very limited um if someone says something i can be like yeah i've heard that i know it i know it's there but yeah i'm not one of those who be like first corinthians 7 2 oh, it's, two, it's two, two corinthians two corinthians walk into a bar um but i did i remember and this was recent maybe last week you know they said you know jesus came to the earth to essentially experience the same type of life that we we have mm. and of all you know you you i think in the beginning of matthew because i'm in matthew right now you know it talks about you know Satan. he takes his 40 days um fast and satan comes and or the spirit takes him to satan and he is you know satan's challenging him do this because the bible says like the word says blah 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 and jesus is like yo bro get out of my face and there are other scriptures of course that support how jesus essentially experienced the same things that we've experienced he can understand our lifestyle but i remember thinking to myself like there's nothing in the bible that says like jesus dealt with like sexual temptation like there's nothing allowed in the bible hmm? there's nothing allowed in the bible that shows but that is something that crossed my mind like you know there's no yeah paul addresses it paul's like yo if you can't keep your in a box like get married like paul straight up he was like if you can't just get yourself a wife yeah this is interesting <laughs> it's interesting um paul like some of us got it but if you don't no, i mean just think i mean just think about no reference that's, to that's, that's such an interesting like perspective like if you can't resist the urge to have sex out of wedlock just get married so that you can have all the sex you want but but, but again but, but this is coming that, from but, someone who wasn't married true which is like why are you even speaking on this topic but also <laughs> I mean, we talk we, we talk about when we talk about like the sanctity of marriage and everything and you're not supposed to be getting divorced but if you're telling people just to go ahead and get married so that you can resist but that urge that's not necessarily the strongest foundation it's not and we see a lot of that happening these days in the modern world. So I'm just saying, no disrespect to Paul. That's my guy. Number one. Paul's everybody's guys. Shout out to Paul. But Paul Paul about to come get you. It's just face. like it's just it's just some it's, it's just some things where I'm like <laughs> Paul gonna come for you in your sleep. Really, Paul? Like he was he was harsh. He he not, was, not even harsh. I mean, I think a lot of that a lot of that rhetoric is 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 reckless. He was reckless. Yeah, and why are we <laughs> like that? Made the cut. <laughs> Some of this other stuff got held out, but that made it in. It's 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 tough. Um, you, you can you could argue a lot, Bill, but that is why are we here? Because why? Why? How I just wanted. To, I just. I just wanted to know how you felt about the potential for Jesus to have been married and be a father. Posthumously. If Jesus was, I would wonder if Jesus woke up in the middle of the night. Well, he wouldn't have been. Mary wouldn't have been. Mary would have been pregnant at the time of the crucifixion, Jesus according to. Is that what you're trying to imply? No, nah, I mean, but apparently they got married. Allegedly. Allegedly. You said apparently. That's what Dan Brown said. I don't know who the stand. Yeah, he wrote the. He wrote the Da Vinci Code. He did. He did his research. What's crazy is I need someone to info like people will be hacking all this stuff. I need somebody to hack the Vatican. I don't care about the Vatican because I know they got I know they got the records digital advantage and mm. eliminate my student loans and then whoever is our mortgager. I know they have. I know they have those copies, whatever gospels they have that they didn't allow in. I know they have them digitalized. I need somebody to hack, and I need to get them on a thumb drive. That's how people and, die. And I need. I, I need to be able to see all of the gospels that didn't make the cut. That's just what I want to see. I've, I've seen what's there. Obviously we've all seen it time and time again, but I want to see what didn't make the cut. And I want to know why I think that I want to know why I think God has his reasons. As to I mean, why. It ain't got nothing to do with God is man. I think everything I think. And that's the problem. People, give man a lot more credit than man deserves like because from the because from the <laughs> beginning of time no, if man you're, if you're a believer mm. 
if okay. you're a believer. So that's why I like people yeah. who are like anti-abortion, pro-life, all of that. If you're a believer and you believe that God created the earth and that he is in control. And if you live in the actual scripture that is that we have access to Romans 8, 28, mm -hmm. you will work all things for mm -hmm. your good. I, this isn't me condoning things, mm. but this is me saying that we have an omnipresent, omnipotent God mm. that we believe in. Mm. So yes, man has free will and has access to doing things. Uh -huh. But if there, if there were specific books, articles that God wanted, because I think mm. my belief is if all of the, the, all of the disciples, all the pilgrims, all the people who witnessed what Jesus did, mm. and mind you, I'm, I'm, I'm watching a, the chosen, which is, you know, uh, an expansion, artistic expansion of, of Jesus's fiction. Yeah. I mean, it, it's, it's based off of, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, but there are things that are expounded upon that will, that give you perspective mm. that um, from my understanding, what I'm making the assumption is someone took time with God mm. to say, how can I expand this part of the story so that it's more relatable to people? So like, if you watch the chosen, there's a part where Mary died, like falls back she goes back to her old life. Mm. Um, you know, she, the, the way they set up the scene, somebody shows up, they've got a demon, demons in them. The demons call her by the name that she used to go by. Like, oh, we know about you, blah, blah, blah. It causes her to regress. You know, she goes back to like some gambling spot. And then, you know, Jesus comes back for her. And it's just like, you know, if you can just lose your redemption like that, it's not worth it, which adds more context it, it makes it makes it more relatable as opposed to like the, the the quick the quickness of the bible um in my opinion but i see it as somebody sat with god and said how can i expand this part so that it can be relatable so people can feel like they they understand more um i say all that to say i believe that god is all powerful do I believe that there are probably more there accounts outside of Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Paul, the letters and all of that? Of course, because you have people who witnessed it. You have people who were there. You have that you have historical documentation. So are you so are you are you are you just not acknowledging the Council of Nicaea? The what? The Council the the Council of Nicaea where the the Bible was actually compiled? I don't know all that. So you're not familiar with Const you're not you're, but you're not familiar with Constantine's influence on the Bible. I do. Oh yeah, Constantine. Yeah, I know. I know about Constantine. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm not a biblical scholar in the sense that I under I know the details of how I I, I just know. Okay, so, Moses ha handled this part of the Bible. Paul handled this part of the so, Bible. That's how I understand. That's how. So as as you just reference history, mm -hmm. so as a part of that, I think it's important that you do familiarize yourself with it because I think let me step back I think your faith is absolutely 100% yours and I would I would not want to infringe on that but if you are to say um, if you're to speak historically right and you don't know about <coughs> the council of Nicaea and I'm, I apologize for not pronouncing it correctly. You should probably familiarize yourself with it mm. because it's a part of the story of the Bible's composition. I'm sure it is. Yeah. It's, it's a big part of it. The point so, that I was getting to, no, I, I, I understand what you're saying is that I think that what we have access to God played a role in what, in that. Yeah. And I understand that, but I also understand that as long as man has been on this earth, despite wherever their direction is coming from, uh, time and time again, man has made its own decision, which is why we have the whole repent, which is why repent exists in the first place, right? Because if we just follow what God wanted us to do, then there would be no need to repent. So... I 
I don't think just because God is is all everything that there wasn't a bunch of dudes who was had their own agendas Mm -hmm. with allowing what was in the Bible and what wasn't. Oh, I mean, um, we have wealthy people. And yeah, I'm so so. I mean, world orders, and I'm not disputing. And the whole reason, and the whole reason that, according to the Bible, the whole reason that a lot of why we are how we are is because Adam and Eve couldn't obey some of the simplest commands. They did their own thing. Mm-hmm. You know, God was very explicit. Mm-hmm. Do not do this one thing, mm-hmm. and they did it. It was kind of. Weird how the serpent, my like devil was just there. <laughs> the <laughs> my old buddy was just. I've been listening just, to. Who's there? I'm trying to do the Bible in a year. Um, I've read the full Bible before. Well, I've read part of the Bible. I skipped Leviticus and when it was like begot, began, began, yeah. all of that. I was like, y'all, there are too many of y'all, and your names have too many syllables. Like l- reading the Bible names is like reading Nigerian names. Like they're ridiculous. It's a lot. Um, so I skipped that part, but I read. I've read through the Bible. Yeah. Um, and I, I do find the creation portion, that Genesis part, very interesting. Um, like I know the part that really sticks out to me when they did eat of the fruit. Mm. And it says, I can't remember what verse, but it says, you know, they heard God's footsteps, like God was walking in the garden. Um, And some of the Bible where I, not struggle, but where I always am like that part, Mm. it's like, you already knew this was going to happen. Why you act surprised? Right. But then I think about like, as a parent, I know when my kid has done something, but I'll not that I play it, but I want them to acknowledge that they've done something. Mm. Um, I, I will say, I think parenthood has made me have a different perspective. Mm. Uh, I don't know how we got into all of this with because, God, but I do think it's very important. If you read the Bible, if you have a relationship with God, like you need, you need to have both. You need to, have ears open to hear from God because you can read a scripture. I can read a scripture and we can get two different well, interpretations. That's anything. That is anything, but there, there may be a way God needs you to interpret it in comparison to how he needs me to interpret it. Mm-hmm. But I also feel that again, with parent, your faith and your relationship with God is so individual. It's And again, parenthood has made this make sense to me. My relationship with Solace is different from my relationship with Savi as it is with my relationship with Sonoma. Each child is in a different stage in life and needs me in a different capacity. So the maternal offerings that I have each with each kid is different. There are some times where I do need to sit and snuggle with a child. There are times where I need to be firm with a child. There are times where I need to be nurturing, excuse me, with a child. But I think a lot of that is just recognizing your individual kid. And if from that perspective, that makes me recognize that God has to understand how to, he created me. So he knows how he needs to approach me. He knows how he needs to approach you. Even in our marriage, there are ways that I know if I want you to do something and I want you to do it expeditiously, I have to make sure you think that I think you can't do it. That's what's going to motivate you to do it. Or I have to Jedi mind trick you and make you think that you came up with an idea and then you'll do it. This is If I tell you to do something, you might get offense to the fact that I told you to do it. Uh, this is this is all it's very like this is all not true really struggling it is not. so you it, it's all about communication these are, these are falsehoods it's all about communication it's all about relationship but no i don't i don't are i don't disagree that there are other because the quran references jesus as a prophet mm-hmm. um I don't know about others, but I do know I took a a course and the Quran specifically does acknowledge Jesus as a prophet. So I I, I don't, I, 
I love history. I love, you know, the connotation, the context and learning all of that. But I think when it comes to faith, at least where I am right now, I'm more sensitive. I have had a, a, an, a, an interest in actually academically studying the Bible and theology and getting more of an understanding of it. But I won't dispute that. Yes, there are there are accounts from other people mm. outside of the apostles, the Romans, the Greeks, all the other empires that were existing who witnessed it. And their accounts were either lost or hidden or controlled. I, I don't dispute that because when it comes to government, government has always been about manipulation and controlling the people. So you agree that there's a possibility that Jesus was married? I agree that there are parts of the Bible that have been left out. And one of those could be the fact that Jesus was married. I'm not, I'm neither confirming nor denying. Okay. So we spent a lot of time on that. I was actually just trolling, but we actually, actually got into like half, halfway decent conversation, which is cool. Halfway? Halfway decent. Okay. We should, we should, spar on this more often i don't like i i am not confident enough to biblically spar it's just you it's just you and me i with you i would you didn't let me finish speaking um because you are too logical and That's you so require citations no i just require you you I require thought you require citations. You require no. I just require evidence. Citation is evidence. You no, I require evidence. Where is it? Like so, you, you are the epitome of who, what, where, when, why. So, but that's because your background is English. No and communication. You you need context. You need the evidence to support. So you're just going to tell me about, yeah. about my life. You okay. need the evidence. So I'll, to support. I'll, wait, I'll wait till you tell me. I can speak. I am not. I am not that type. So I require. Yes, I I, I appreciate a source. Um. But I also require thought, whereas you believe. Sometimes I would ask that you think not that the two are mutually exclusive, but sometimes one can be a little bit more dominant than the other. As you said, sometimes you just you walk by faith, not by sight. Right. So got me this far. I let you to me, baby. So, um, yeah, I, I require. I, I will I will challenge your thought process on things, but I don't believe that we should just take things as they're given to us. I think that we should receive them, chew on them, and then decide for ourselves how we feel about them. So if I hear you, if it sounds like you're just parroting something, yeah, I'll challenge you on it. Be like, well, what do you think about this? Did you know that this happened? And I don't right? dispute that. Even the Bible itself, like God says, yeah, ask like God. Tells you like so that's why I said we should we should just have a little back and forth every once in a while because I really want you to look up the council nice here like when we when we cut these cameras off we should go to bed and like we just watch like a little YouTube video on them. there's even a section about it in the Da Vinci Code which I know is like blasphemous to like church folk but let me pray Jesus was literally mortal one day and divine the next. Do the council and I see it. They determine Jesus' divinity. See, the stuff you don't know about because you don't know about the girl. Girl. I'm not your girl. Um, we're at an hour, we're at an hour 30. Dang. Um, there was a few things on the list. Mm -hmm. uh, we spent a little time. I guess the only last thing that, uh, that we didn't get to was, uh, did you hear about Shannon Sharp and Jess Larry's? Not until I read the article. Oh, because you did read it. Okay. Were you familiar with Just Larry's? Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you, how do you. Know her from the Breakfast Club. I don't know any of her contacts before the Breakfast okay. Club. Gotcha. I think that's fine. It's really not about Shannon and Jess. More so, how do you feel about. And just for context, anybody who doesn't know, um, Just Larry's named the new co host of the, of the, of the Breakfast Club. And she's pregnant too, right? And she's pregnant. Uh, congratulations to her. I don't, I don't know. Okay. It, I mean, that's not important. Yeah, it's, it's not. I don't, I mean, it is, but it's not. I mean, it kind of is to her, I'm sure. But to she somebody. but she knows. So, and we know. Does she but it's know? none of our business. So, um, Shannon Sharp obviously went from first take to, not first take, um, Undisputed to first take as How club. How many shows is he on? So, he's on first take. Mondays and Tuesdays. What's first take? Tuesday, show? 
for sake of Stephen A. Smith. And uh, Stephen A. Smith, ESPN, Jess. Come I don't on. watch ESPN. I don't like Stephen. Um, he grieves my spirit. You know, like, like if if uh, if my dreams come true, like we would be sitting down with Stephen. You can't say you don't like him. You can sit down with Stephen. So you wouldn't sit down with Stephen A. Smith. I, I, <laughs> Because I bet you, I bet you, as he is on camera, he's nothing like that off camera. He would, he would probably be one of my favorite because I love polarizing people in real life. But um, on camera, I cannot with him. I would, I would tell him that. I would love to sit down with I Stephen A. Smith. I will stand by every person that I've said I don't like. I am prepared to tell them to their face. Like me and I, like me and the, the Henry, Harry and the Harry. <laughs> and Ma- like, look, I, I'd be like Duke and Duchess. I've uh, always been a fan. Um. So he's on first take, and then he has Club Shay Shay, of course, his mm-hmm. podcast. And then he also has uh, Night. What's it called? Night? Um, no. Nighttime? And it's with, I know it's with, I just found out it's with Ocho Cinco. Night, Nightcap. I think that's what uh, it's called. I didn't realize. I thought it was Ocho Cinco's show, and he just like. Yeah, it's, it. called, it's called Nightcap. So he does it with, with Ocho Cinco. Sometimes he'll have Gilbert Arenas on there, former basketball player. Um, but Jess Hilarious came up somehow and uh and Shannon was talking about, you know, body yaddy yaddy yaddy. <laughs> so that made it to the breakfast back to the breakfast club. Um and she said she didn't hate it, but you know, she said that at times there are paraphrasing, there are times where men's um appreciation for you and your body can go a little bit too far. Mm-hmm. <coughs> So my question to you as a married woman uh, who is still probably haven't even reached your prime yet. Y'all don't even know. So you, um, they definitely haven't reached your prime, uh, but are, are, are naturally curvy and you like to present when you go out. Like there are times where we when we go out, and I'm like I have in my mind like I'm worried it's fit, and I'll come into the bedroom and you just like, you just like you're like fire, and I look at my like at my little fit. I'm like I can't walk. I can't walk out. I'm gonna bring I'm gonna bring Jess's value down. But anyways, so how do you feel like like as a woman? As an as an as an as an mature, um, attractive woman who checks a lot of boxes for what men of a particular demographic like in a woman physically, and obviously personality wise, is there a line for you? Like, how much is too much when it comes to someone sort of speaking of you? how you appeal to them like how much is too much is there is like is there any sort of um double standard where like you go out you put on form-fitting clothes you you go out to look a certain way and then somebody you know approaches you Mm -hmm. like how do you how do you balance what's acceptable to you and what isn't in terms of someone appreciating how you look? And I, and I, maybe I presented I'm sorry maybe I presented that unfairly like maybe your titles don't really matter you being a mom you being married like maybe it's just you as a woman and I apologize if that was out of turn but just like take it. Um, one I don't I don't know that I dress to present. If I'm understanding what you say, what, how you define person. Well, you always you say when, to look nice. You say when we go, you say you've always been taught when you go out, you go out you, looking you your, best. your best. Yeah, that's um, what I meant. I have always struggled when I, when I came into my body, I struggled. I still struggle with my, with my, my figure. What? Um, I'm speaking. I'm just, I was, I was just curious. I was going to elaborate. Oh, go ahead. Um, so. I... I was, I went through a chubby phase and then I got really skinny and then I'd say sophomore year in college, 
is when my hips presented, my butt presented. I, I, I really, you know, started to curve. Um, and I'll never forget, I had walked into the student union. You told the story before. I told, yeah. And I had just dressed nicely. I was wearing a skirt. I was wearing a top. I was cute. I walked into the student union. Of course, it was like black happy hour. All the black Greeks, like everybody who was everybody was in the student union at this time. And I just, from across the room, one of the Kappas yelled, hips. And like the entire student union went silent. Everybody looked at me. And if I was capable of turning red, I would have. Um, I was embarrassed because yes, I have, I have hips. I have, I, I recognize that I have a good figure. I recognize the importance of having a good figure. I don't like the in attention that my figure brings. Mm. It's very, it's very uncomfortable. Um, when I go out, I, so this is one thing when I, I remember I used to try to rationalize like, you know, as a black woman, your body, if not all black women, but most black women, your body defaults you into being sexualized. So I can put on something, a white counterpart part can put on something, the exact same outfit or a woman who's not shaped like me can put on the exact same outfit and the sexual perception that I will give differs than what she will give. And it's not intended for me to seem like I'm flaunting my body. Mm. If I wear a pair of jeans that fit, I'm not trying to show off my body. I'm just trying to wear clothes that fit. If I wear sweatpants that are loose, those still should. So it's, it's, it's this conundrum of damned if I do, damned if I don't. Um, and then you have people, oh, girl, if I had your body, you know, I wouldn't know what to do. That's why God didn't give me a butt, blah, blah, blah. And I will joke and I will, people think I'm joking, but I'm like, if you want it, you could, like, if you figure out a way to have it, you could take it because it's overwhelming. It draws attention to me that I don't want. And maybe because... I'd say my body has re as with, with having children and just getting older, my body has changed in comparison to what it was. So I'm in a stage where I don't need physical attention. When I go out, like a majority of my friends are single. When I go out with my friends, I'm, I'm dressing up for this to, to match their energy, but I'm not dressing provocatively. You know, I'm not usually wearing like cut V and my friends don't really, my friend, my friends don't really dress like that. Um, but I would go out with, in the past, with friends who would dress more provocatively, and I would still draw more attention. And I'm the one who's trying to be modest. Um, I can't speak. And it's it's one of those tough lines because, you know, you got women who dress a certain way, but you dress a certain way and you call certain attention, but you also tell people like, just because I'm dressed this way doesn't mean I want this attention, which I respect and I, I get. And right. I, I also believe that too. Cause I, I, I've, I've been in situations where I've been made uncomfortable based off of how, how I was dressed and my, in my mind, my outfit wasn't trying to elicit any special attention but I, I get that it can be confusing. I think it's more a conversation that needs to be had with men mm. and how they are to appreciate the beauty of a woman. I get it. Men are designed to lustfully look at women. Um, I find it annoying. I find it at times immature mm. um you know a woman walks by you have to look at her butt you have like it, like but you don't you don't have to uh and again men and women are designed differently i agree but, you absolutely don't have to but that need to take possession over her body visually um 
what do you gain from like I don't understand the gain from looking at a woman's butt looking at her hips analyzing her I, 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 but I'm not a man mm. um, I I don't again I don't know Jess outside of I only I have only ever seen Jess sitting down behind a mic so I don't know what her body looks like um, I think it's also different in the black community um black women our bodies are almost a rite of passage you know to be the epitome of a black woman you have wide hips you have a big butt you're busty you're curvy like the words that are used to describe the physical success of a black woman we all want to have that but at the same time i don't think enough men respect or even know what the boundary is of this is too far this mm. is still this is I, this is potentially someone's wife this is like this is not mine right um lustful eyes are not like to have eyes of lust on someone that you could be lusting over someone's wife. Like you could, I, I don't know. It, it's very complex. I don't like it. I don't like walking into rooms and I'm, I'm, I'm going into environments with black men all the time. I work in the liquor industry. I don't like, and it's not just black men. It's, 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 it's all men. You know, I, I, I feel it more from black men, maybe because I'm anticipating it um, because I know that my body appeals to them. But I've been in scenarios where like white men have just been like, and I'm like, okay, like, like you, I want to hide. And I, I know that I frequently found myself and that's why a lot of people might not notice. I usually like this. I just happened to put this on cause I didn't want to change. But when I go out, I have a kimono on, I have a shawl. I usually have something that's covering me um, because I need that option to hide myself, to conceal myself. Um, I'm very, and maybe because I went through body insecurity for so long and then you have kids and your body doesn't quite bounce back. And even though like I'm in a state, I like my trainer reminded me today, I'm down 40 pounds from my highest postpartum. And I'm still in a state where I, I, I still see myself as not attractive, but I'm also not needing to be attractive to other people because I have a husband, but I also don't like being lusted over by you either because I feel like it's just this that, that matters. Um, and I always have to reprogram myself and again, I go through like you got years of trauma and, and dating and things that you have to break down where, you know, like you want to be everything for somebody, but you're also not that for yourself. So, you know, I didn't hear what Shannon said to Jess. I'm sure it made her uncomfortable. He said to her, he was speaking of about, her. about her. I'm sure it made her uncomfortable. And I mean, as women, you know that there are, I think the thing with men, there are private behind closed doors conversations that are had. And I think our culture has made it comfortable to have those behind closed doors conversations in public spaces. And if this conversation had been had in off the mic, that would be one thing. But it now it's bringing attention to Jess. Now people are going to be looking at her and mm. that might not be attention she wants. So, you know, I, I sympathize because I, I get uncomfortable when attention is brought to me. But again, like I said, this is years of insecurity, years of, you know, Am I good enough? Do I look good enough? When I wanted the attention, I didn't get it. And now that I don't like women want to control the narrative. We don't get to control the narrative. So, and then you also have women who are just like, I'm going to put it all out there all the time. So it's confusing men in terms of like, how are we supposed to respond? Cause you got this chick who is, you know, busted wide open. And this one who's like, Oh, now I want to be reserved. But I know I get most sensitive when 
I feel like I'm misinterpreted because I don't feel like I'm the type who's putting myself out there to be lusted for. I dress nicely. I dress to fit my form. I don't intentionally go and say, I'm going to buy this little skirt and show off my legs. No, I bought a skirt that was in my size. And when I put it on, because my hips are wider, it turned it turns out that it it's shorter on me than it would be on somebody else. Um, but sorry, I feel like I'm rambling on. And there's a spider right there. It just takes a little tap, David. You're going to wake up the whole house. But what do you think? You're a man. Um, I actually think this is one of the topics that I don't necessarily need to speak but I, I did want to hear what your opinion was. Because honestly, I don't think it matters what a man thinks because it's not a man speaking about another man's body. It's about a man speaking about a woman. So um, I think one thing we can do better as men is listen and understand where we need to sit. Yeah. Conversation's out but I just wanted to get your perspective. Mm -hmm. I think I got it. Cool. Although I will say that I, I, I know it's something that you have to work through, but it's never, I see your physical, I see your body as a part of you, right? So I'm not going to say it and act like it doesn't play a role in my attraction to you or didn't play a role in my attraction to you, but I've been attracted to a lot of women you are attracted to a number of people as you go throughout your life. Um, but an attraction, a physical attraction doesn't really have staying power because there's always going to be somebody who looks better or who's taller or who's thinner or who has a bigger butt or who has bigger breasts or, you know, a sharper arc on their eye. Like there's always going to be somebody who outdoes you in something or maybe everything. Um, so if I'm just attracted to you physically, then that's going to at some point. So, um, my, and this is just me talking to you and Garrett, I guess we're just on the mic, but my attraction to you though, it seem it may seem as if I'm only concerned about your physical attributes. It goes far beyond what you present. If, if that makes sense. Um, so I, yeah, I just don't want you thinking that I hate that I contribute to the feeling that you need to cover up, I guess. Um, so if it's, if it's a way I need to approach you like differently, then that's fine. Like, just let me know and I'll, I'll do it like tonight. I'll be like, so, dear Jessica, you're the same guy who said, if I lose my butt, you were leaving me. That's true. <laughs> I was a player. Um, nah, I mean, it's tough, but I love you, baby. And I'm here for a long haul. Okay. Even if you ain't got no haul, <laughs> I'm here for it. Um, but yeah. Nah, I love you. You know, I love you to, to the depths, girl. The depths. All right. Uh, it's an hour and 50 minutes. So it is, Goodness. it is also for the NBA. So we are not in India. We are not in Indianapolis, as you can see. We are here in Charlotte with our girls. All of them. All three of them. And they've got. So One of them has a four day weekend and two of them will have a three day weekend. So pray for us. But uh, shout out to the NBA threads community. Shout out to threads. And those of you who are there, please uh, post pictures and yeah, Lex and Photoshop us in. <laughs> and, and uh, Johnny and hmm. Look, I've been coughing for everybody and, and everybody else who's out there. Share pics. I'm going to repost as much as I possibly can. Um, and have a good time. And everybody else. 
Uh, if you're at home, enjoy. Hopefully, All Star Weekend is enjoyable for you to watch at home on on TV. And Hennessy is up in there, official. Hennessy, Justice Spirit sponsor of just, the NBA. Just because so people, I had some activations. I, I have no no one there. <laughs> my mean, my connections are there. Um, but your work is contributing. Oh, I'm sure. I'm sure it is. But yeah. But uh, yeah. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and uh, hit the subscribe button. This is kind of the gist of what our conversations are are like. Sometimes they're structured. Sometimes they're not. <laughs> they're not. Share some feedback because we had some interesting conversations. So I'd love to get everyone else's perspective. Yeah, assuming every, sense. everything makes it in. For the six of you who always comment, I appreciate you. Yeah, Jamar. Yep. Um, of course, mom. Mom, of course. And the uh, fell off. Well, mom used to comment. Mom would be. Mom would jump in every now and again. Yeah, and but we didn't comments. post. We didn't. We didn't drop an episode for like a month. So we okay. probably we back. And who else? Your uh, what's her name? Tia. Tia. Yes, Tia. Tia's it's my homie. Um, shout out to Jamar. As well for always leaving this flame emoji. Uh, Did you ever share the song? Hmm? The song where he you never share the NBA th- thread song. Sure, where? It Here? Much vibes, yeah. Oh, I guess I didn't. He definitely like yo. David's part of a bar. I mean, it's just the verse. I mean, it's it's the hook part okay. of the hook. Okay. Yeah. No, I mean, it's. I mean, I don't. I don't. From Rush. I don't mean that as in like it's insignificant. I'm just saying like it's. Okay, he's got to put it in at least link it. I'll so link um, it. maybe I'll end the uh, I'll check. Well, it'd be too late for me to check with him. So maybe next week I'll end where as I normally end with growing pains. Growing pains. I'll end with NBA threats if if I get Jamar's blessing. Um, I think you will. It'd be perfect because we'll have to recap All Star. Yes. So that would be a perfect song to. Yes, yes, we will. And um, maybe at that time I'll share some news. <laughs> oh yeah, maybe. Um, and also we booked the booked the guests. We did. And we also somebody else hit me up in my DMs said they want to come, but I don't know if they mean like my podcast or if they mean like the one that I've done with Tone and uh, and Jared. So I got to get clarity. But um, yeah, somebody else was in my somebody else hit me up today. It was actually I'm actually kind of geeked out about, but um. So yeah, this is episode. This is ninety ninety eight. I don't know. 90, what was last week? Last week was ninety. I don't. I think know. last week was ninety seven. This night we're coming up on a hundred. So this is this is exciting. I have um, several bottles of champagne. Yeah, we'll pop all of them. No. And do like a what do you call it when you sample? A flight. A flight. We'll get a flight we'll of champagne in there. No. Yeah, because we won't survive. Um, Speaking of champagne, you finished the rest of it. I did because you went to bed. So, but why did you cover it? Why do you do that? What? You'll finish something and then like put it back. Like you'll finish your creamer and put it back in the fridge and then I have to go. No, there's some there's some left. You finish the body wash in the shower and instead of I thought, no, because you're always like, oh, there's more in here. So I feel like I can't ever gauge when once something's done and when it's not. So I just leave it for you to determine because you can always magically eke out like more. Um, The champagne. I mean, I was drunk. Or not drunk, but I was buzz when I finished the champagne, so that's probably why I put the lid back on and but I left it on the counter. It's not it's like, like I put it. It's empty. Why? It's not like is I put it back in the thing. Okay. Because you were supposed to be here with me when I got back from putting the girls to bed, but you bounced. And um. Yeah. All right. Are we calling this or? We- yes. You keep bringing stuff up. But uh, shout out to everybody. Shout out to the original drop. Uh, pff, drive tribe. What? Vibe tribe. Missy Allen. Jarrell, Joe, Beth, Moms, <coughs> Cousin Chinieri, Cousin Lindy, Lyle, Dad, <laughs> everybody else who, uh, everybody else listens, J2, Georgia on occasion, Georgia has her seasons when she listens to the pod. She's listened all season. Um, Matt, my brother. My brother Yo. from another. Uh, I'm leaving people out, which this I is not an acceptance speech. I know. Right? I'm this just. I'm, I'm, no, I'm just saying. I just want to let people know. Spe- for episode 100 specifically that I appreciate them. 
It's on my heart. God put it on my heart. So you want me to ignore God? Now you hear God? I'm just saying. I heard a whisper. Mr. The Nice man keeps didn't put all the books in the Bible. <laughs> Wait. Council of Nicaea. Not niacine. It sounds like a, a patch for Nicaea smokers. Is vitamins. Uh, so uh, subscribe, like, comment. Uh, we're also on Apple, Spotify, uh, whatever Google is doing. I don't know if it's YouTube Music or Google, Google Podcast. I think Google Podcast is going away. And it's just Apple, YouTube Music. But uh, you can find us on the major streaming platforms. And uh, hit up the website, even though there's nothing there except the podcast episodes maybe we should get into the merch freddie uh was telling me that we should like do some stuff he says that's what he does so i think i'm gonna hit him up but i didn't want to hit him up because you know they had a lot going on right now i do so but with a lot going on sometimes having something else helps it's true bring one his own official consultant for rush vibes and may i rush uh that's all i have you got anything else? Bed. I'm ready for bed. Oh. It's almost a two hour episode. Almost? Oh, I'll cut it. I'll cut it down a little bit. Yeah, there was a lot of dead 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 space in the beginning. Yeah. When you were scrolling your phone per usual. You were scrolling yours too. Because you were said you were trying to find stuff. Yeah, and I thought you would converse. All right, so we'll do the <coughs> see. I will cough in your face. See? God don't like ugly. We will see y'all next week. <coughs> Bye. Huh. Done with some grow pains. Yeah. Hey, hey. I done came way too far, can stop me now. I done came way too far, can stop me now. I done came way too far, can stop me now. I done came way too far, can stop me now. Can stop me now. Can stop me now. Yeah, I done came way too far, can stop me now.